Now I want to add all kinds of holes around the place and ribs and more tears to the edge. So I'm just going to drag in some more torn edge fabrics. I like this one in particular. I think it would be nice here in the middle. I'll scale it up a bit and position it something like that. Control click on it. And I'll start by Control Shift I to select the inverse. Take my brush on black at 100 and erase around it here. And then Control Shift I again to select this inner part, switch to white, and then paint back any part that I deleted by mistake before. And there we've got a nice torn edge. I think my weave here is too big, so I'm going to go to the pattern overlay. And I'm going to shrink that and uncheck link with layer. And that looks a bit better. And here's a nice torn edge too, so I'll drop that one on. And I think it would be nice if it goes up a bit and then down. So in fact, I'm going to position this up here something like that and then I'll make it go down a bit longer. Enter, control select it, control shift I to first select the inverse with black, paint around it, and then at a low opacity paint those holes on the inside, those worn out parts and holes, and then control shift I to select this part switch colors again to white and then at 100 paint in all those tone bits and we can hide the fabric so we can see what's going on there and then at a lower opacity gently paint in over these parts which are a bit too worn out for my liking and then to blend these parts together and these parts I'm going to find some suitable tone bit. I like this hairy stringy part here especially. So I'll drop that on, enter, and I think that would be nice probably here, but we could use a bit of those stringy bits for this part as well. Control click on it, and then use my white brush to paint in those strings. Raise the opacity. And that looks nice. And I think we can use this hairy bit right here. Control click on that. And then use my white brush to paint in some of those hairs strings. Mm, I don't like that. But I think this string here will be nice, so I'm going to drop that on. Enter. And position it. Enter. Then control click on it. And use my white brush to brush in those parts that I want added to it. And then switch to black color and remove some extra bits that I want. Lower my opacity. And brush it up a bit. Not too bad. It would be nice to have some kind of a big rip there. I think this will be perfect for that. Enter. And it could start from around here and then go up to here and then we'll add some other flaily bits there afterwards. You can also distort it of course, stretch it or even warp it. Control click on it. Control shift I to select the inverse. And then with a black brush, 
and then with a black brush, brush along this part here. And then control, wait, finish this part up here. And then control shift I to select the inverse, change to white color, and paint in all those flaily bits. And I think this went a bit too far here, so let's clean that up. Or just go back a few steps. Coming along nicely. Here I see we need to clean something. And there's a lot more work that needs to be done on the bottom to make it look really nice. This is just getting the basic tears into place. Now before I go working more on the bottom, I'm going to zoom that part ahead so you don't have to watch through every move that I'm doing there, since you know the overall technique of control selecting it and changing colors. And then now I'm going to add some holes and then get back to doing the bottom. So to add some holes, that's pretty simple. I'm going to drag in this nice hole. And it would be nice, let's say, over here, enter, control, select it. And it's basically the same like painting on the bottom of the tears. I'm going to hide it, go into my mask, and with the black color, oops, first do a control shift I to select the inverse, and then with the black color, paint in these nice holes. And then if we do control D, we can see that we've got a nice hole here. And then lowering my opacity a bit to 20 or something and switching to white, I'm going to paint in a bit these edges that went a bit too far. And there we go, now we have a big hole there. And then I'm going to add a few small holes around the place. Control click on it again, then control shift I to select the inner part of the hole. Then using my black brush, paint that out. And when I'm painting it out, let's go back there. I'm going to put it at 100 so I can get that hole thoroughly transparent. And then deselect and switch to white at a lower opacity and paint back some more of the cloth. And just to see how it looks so far, I'm going to hide the white background and go File, Save As, and save it as a PNG to my desktop and call it Zumbi Texturing 1. And then back in Marvelous Designer, I'm going to select my default fabric, click this button here, and load in the texture. Show my textures. Take my texture transform tool and transform it into place. And I think it's a bit too big, so I'm going to scale it down slowly. Because I added those stringy tone bits, we have to make it a touch longer, so I'm going to select this bottom here. And we can move it back next to the other one. And then select this one here and then just make it a bit longer. And there we can see the bottom edges are nicely torn up. And we can see her skin coming through these lovely holes. So it's looking good. Now we just need to work more on all the edges and the sleeves and the torn bottoms. And get this texture into place better. And maybe take this line up a tiny bit. Something like that. And I think a few small holes up here might be nice and some rips of course around 
the neck part here and then the sleeve I want very ripped up. 